So in this lecture, we're going to explore the idea of caring for country. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples' identity, spirituality, law and culture largely revolve around the idea of looking after country. Some important Indigenous sayings include treading lightly, healthy country, healthy people, and if you look after country, country will look after you. Now, the importance of this notion, caring for country, has led to several uh, different government funded initiatives. So one of those programs is called Working on Country. And this essentially allows Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander rangers to be looking after their country and making sure that they are equipped uh, with the right tools to be able to do that. Another example is uh, Indigenous protected areas. Now, these are identified locations where they are protected uh, and Indigenous peoples are able to use their own techniques to manage their land. Now, across Australia, there are about 143 Indigenous protected areas, and that covers about 87 million hectares. And more broadly, about 50% of Australia's land is officially recognised as Aboriginal land under the Native Title Act. And worldwide, around 80% of the world's biodiversity is located on Indigenous land. Despite Indigenous peoples making up around 6% of the world's population and having recognised ownership of only 22% of the world's land, that means that 80% of the world's biodiversity is located on only 22% of the land in the world. Yeah, wow. Obviously, this fact that Indigenous land has been able to protect 80% of the world's biodiversity is not a coincidence. Caring for country is often at odds, unfortunately, with a Western approach to land management, which largely seeks to exploit the land for profits. Um, this is all obviously often at the cost of that biodiversity. In contrast, Indigenous peoples really prioritise the health and sustainability of living and coexisting with their surrounding environment. So with all of this information, and in light of climate change uh, due to human-driven overconsumption, it is no surprise that the world is looking to Indigenous peoples uh, for how to live sustainably. However, with the growing space industry, increasing its footprint around the world and beyond, it is clear to Indigenous people that their land practices can also be applied to sky country. So Carly, what does caring for country look like when it's applied to the sky? Well, when talking about caring for country in general, uh, there are certain responsibilities that Indigenous peoples have. For example, the burning of the land, cleansing, uh, the letting the country know that we're there by using the resources that are available, uh, protecting the integrity of the country through respectful actions, protecting and enhancing uh, the, the natural diversity um, and biodiversity of that place, protecting sacred areas, providing a new generation and teaching them of uh, matters that relate to the country uh, and also learning and performing ceremonies. So these principles obviously apply here on the land, but perhaps now we can explore the ways in which we can apply these to the sky. So let's first consider the first principle that you mentioned, which was burning. Aboriginal people in northeast of Tasmania believe that fire was first made by two stars in the Milky Way. It was said that two ancestor spirits brought fire to the Palawa, the Aboriginal people of Tasmania, and that these ancestor spirits can now be seen as two stars near the Milky Way, Castor and Pollux, the Gemini twins in Greek traditions. A story from Oyster Bay region tells us about how two men stood on a mountaintop and threw fire like a star. The two ancestors live in the sky world. Interestingly, these two stars in the Greek and Roman traditions were believed to be the patrons of sailors and would appear to sailors through a phenomenon called St. Elmo's fire, which can occur when the atmosphere becomes charged, 
causing a discharge between an object and the air around it, kind of like lightning. It is said that uh, when this was seen, it was seen as a good omen for sailors. Since then, the Palawa people have used this fire for a multitude of reasons, including travel, hunting, long distance communication, burial practices and land management. So cultural burning, fire stick farming or cool burning is an indigenous land management technique that employs the cooler seasons like winter and autumn to carry out low heat fires to burn off all the undergrowth of bushlands and in forests. Now this also protects the tree canopies which are often used by animals and creatures for safety during these fires. Then when it comes to the warmer months uh, that you know are generally prone to generating out of control bushfires, there is very little fuel to support these bushfires, ultimately reducing the severity um, of potential bushfires. So this is all well and good here on the land, but how does this actually affect the sky? Well, during the 2019-2020 bushfires here in Australia, commonly called the Black Summer bushfires, large amounts of smoke were injected into the atmosphere, causing about a 1% depletion of the ozone layer. Now, 1% might not sound that much, but a 1% depletion can actually take up to 10 years to repair naturally. This smoke circumnavigated the entire globe making it an international issue, not just an Australian problem. So from this example, we can easily see that caring for country can also result in caring for sky country. Let's consider this point about protecting sacred areas. Yeah, from the story of the first fires that we shared earlier, and from many of the stories that we've shared throughout this lecture series, it's easy to see that there are many important areas in the sky for indigenous peoples. However, these places are not protected like the land is. Yeah, so for example, light pollution prevents about 95% of Australians from being able to see the Milky Way in the sky. So for some communities, knowledge on say when to conduct a cool burn um, or you know a multitude of other information can be read from the stars similarly we have seen how the stars act as signifiers for hunting um, and for looking for specific food when to conduct ceremony for lots of different reasons but if people can no longer access the stars and these natural beacons, it becomes very difficult to use this incredibly important environmental knowledge that has been embedded in these special places. Taking care of country, including the land, seas and the skies, is becoming more and more important as the entire world faces the ever-growing effects of climate change. Now more than ever, the world is looking towards indigenous knowledges to help us face the catastrophic effects of climate change. So caring for country has very obvious benefits for people as well, not just the land and the skies and the waters. The former Director General of the World Health Organization, Gro Brutland, believes that listening to these ancient knowledges benefits both indigenous and non-indigenous people alike. Grove Brutland says that Indigenous peoples teach us about the values um, that have permitted humankind to live on this planet for many thousands of years without desecrating it. They teach us about holistic approaches to health that seek to strengthen the social networks of individuals and communities, while also connecting them to the environment in which they live. 